the awesome showdown at the end of the movie between John and the hand. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool and again, a great effect. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies, but before we get going, what are we drinking? Uh, we're drinking O'Grady's Four Leaf Clover Stout from the Clover Patch. <laughs> Burn in hell, you little green, green bastard! Today we have a Patreon requested review and Will Brown would like us to review 1981's The Hand. The Hand was directed by Oliver Stone. <laughs> <laughs> the Hand was directed by a famous director, Oliver Stone. He did Platoon, JFK, and Natural Born Killers, just to name three. It stars the legendary Michael Caine, who's been in so many damn things, <laughs> but we're just gonna name a couple of movies while we're gonna mention Jaws 4 because we reviewed it a couple of years ago. Yeah. And he also was in a really good thriller by De Palma called Dress to Kill. <laughs> or he's in drag. Yeah. <laughs> Andrea Markovici's in this, and she mostly did television, but we're gonna mention one movie, Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Ironside is in that. Molly Ringwald, too. <laughs> the hand starts off picturesque setting in the countryside. John Lansdale, and he's sitting down and he's drawing comic book. And the comic strip that he's doing is called Mandro. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a big seller. Yeah. Um, he's basically um, made a living off of selling these comics called Mandro. His daughter is playing, and she's playing with this lizard, and the, the, the tail comes off. He's like, look, Daddy, look. There's, there's this lizard here, and the tail came off. Like, is it going to grow back? And <laughs> He gets into the house, and his wife right away confronts him, and they've been looking for a house in the city, in New York, and she wants to really move there. And he's not that crazy about it. They get in the car, they start driving. Right away, they start getting into a big argument about the situation that they're in, right? Yeah. She wants to move to New York, and she's not that crazy about having him move with her. <laughs> it's like, so you're gonna leave me here to pay all the bills. It's not gonna happen. He's all mad and everything. <laughs> I'd be mad too. <laughs> While they're driving and arguing, there's this woman in behind them honking the horn, wanting to pass. He's like, no, no, watch out, no, watch out, you silly cow. She wants to pass too. A car in the oncoming lane coming right towards him. He's like, oh, watch out. And he has his hand out, trying to wave this woman along. And his wife speeds up and cuts his arm, his hand off. It's <laughs> all some big truck, this big log <laughs> truck. The car all gets all jolted up, and his hand is all rubber. It <laughs> flies off. <laughs> He's all super hamming it up. Yeah, dude. afterwards. <sighs> <sighs> It's a pretty good scene though. There's a lot of blood. Which yeah, is cool. and it's pretty in it. It's very intense scene, you know. <laughs> the authorities try looking for the hand. They're all trying to scour the, the field <laughs> for <Yeah>. it. <laughs> like nobody can find it. It's just gone. But you do see a shot of it laying there and it's all like rotten and yeah. everything. <laughs> He's lost his livelihood. He gets up in the middle of the night and he sits down and he tries drawing with his other hand. And, and it looks like garbage. Yeah, it's all <laughs> shitty. <laughs> and there's this wood pile too, and he hears like a rustling by the wood pile. This cat jumps up onto the counter, and then it looks at him, and it all jumps out the window, the like through the glass. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> crazy cat is that? So they end up moving to New York City to kind of start a new life. In the meantime, he goes to the doctor, and he gets fitted for a prosthetic which turns out to be like this <laughs> this bionic terminator yeah. hand that <laughs> like that doesn't exist in 1981 and it's all good too you can all move it perfectly like yeah right then go all haywire on you <laughs> yeah wouldn't want to be whacking off with that hand it rips your wang all off <laughs> no Whacking off with it without like the the glove yeah. on it's all that steel. <laughs> like, 
you all shred your wang all up? Like a cheese grater. <laughs> Take a cheese grater to your balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's what that would be, for fuck's sakes. John also has this sort of business deal set up with his publisher. He's going to get somebody else to draw the comics for him, but he's going to retain, like, creative control. The new artist is kind of putting his spin on Michael Caine, on John's ideas, right? Yep. He's, he doesn't like it. Mandro wouldn't do this! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it totally changed the character! They want to sort of push him out of the scene. He leaves the office all super pissed off, and he bumps into this bum. We see the bum kind of sit down in this alleyway, and we get a POV shot of something that starts chasing the bum. <laughs> John needs a form of income, and he's actually been offered a teaching position. Teaching comic book drawing, which is a weird <laughs> thing to teach, but okay. A niche thing, yeah. I guess. But he's got to move out to California to do this, so he leaves his wife and daughter behind. And he gets put up in this shitty rundown cabin in the woods, which is still better than the life he had in New York because he hated it so much. Right. One night after class, one of his students shows up at the door of his cabin, interested in John. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah. And she's not too shy about her intentions. <laughs> she just takes her shirt off, yeah. like, right away? Yeah. If only it was that easy, eh? Yeah. But don't forget, he's still married, and he gets with Stella that night, and she's, like, into the <laughs> prosthetic hand. She's all, like, kissing it and everything, and, like, rubbing it, and he's do all... It! <laughs> do it! Do it! Do it! Some weird, awkward sex scene. <laughs> starts off all slow, and she gets all intense with the hand. So he starts having this affair with Stella. In the meantime, he befriends another teacher at the school, and they're always kind of meeting up in this bar. He mentions to his friend that he's been having these strange blackouts where he'll wake up in the middle of the night and see that he's done this great, magnificent drawing, which he shouldn't be able to do anymore, and doesn't remember doing it. And he's also been having all these weird dreams and visions of, about the hand. Yeah. He always goes to go take a shower and turn on the faucet, and the faucet turns into the hand and mm. grabs him. <laughs> and he's walking home that one day and has a weird vision about this big giant hand coming through the, the store window and grabbing him, and he's seeing like visions of the hand in the apartment and then at the cabin and stuff, so he's kind of haunted by this hand. Mm -hmm. He's still seeing Stella and... To boot, his family is coming over on Christmas to visit him. But he still wants to keep seeing Stella, right? And he's got these presents for her and gives her this nice dress. And yeah, I'll come back later after my shift at work and put it on for you. <laughs> then he goes back to the bar and starts talking to his buddy again. And he starts telling John, Oh, I'm excited for Christmas break. I'll be off for two weeks. I'm going to L.A. with Stella. I'm going to screw her brains out, man. <laughs> yeah, she's been wanting it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> So John's like, why? He's pissed off about this because he thought that they had a thing going. And he gets all drunk that night, doesn't even go home. He's so drunk, he just goes to a hotel room and finishes the job, basically, and <laughs> yeah. his, drinks his sorrows away. In the meantime, Stella does go back to John's cabin after her shift and while well, no one's there. And she sees a bunch of presents underneath the Christmas tree and opens up one of the presents and this hand jumps out and grabs her. John wakes up in the hotel. He's all hung over and everything. <laughs> Realizes, oh, my family's coming. He meets his wife and daughter outside the cabin. He hasn't been home since, right? Yeah. He doesn't know if Stella's there or, or what's going on, right? Strange anticipation as he goes into the cabin with his family. And that's where we're going to end the plot. So if you want to see what happens at the end of the hand... Well, watch the movie and keep watching this review. The first thing we got to mention is that this movie is based on a book called The Lizard's Tale. Oddly enough, I have the novelization of the movie called The Hand. And we have to also mention, too, that it is kind of a silly premise. Like, mm. this hand that's haunting him and, like, following him from, like, the countryside to New York and then to California. Yeah, it's like the hand gets around, you know. Travels. It's all hitchhiking. Yeah, it travels light. But it's all about the delivery and how the movie delivers the premise. Yeah. It's 
delivered very well, and it, it's delivered in a very serious way. It's, it's not delivered campy or, or silly mm -hmm. or comedic. Everything from the, the music to the cinematography, the overall tone and atmosphere of the movie is very serious. And well, the acting, of course. Yep, yep, Michael Caine himself, and he yep. pretty much carries the whole movie. He wasn't even really their first choice for the role. I remember thinking too when I was watching this, like, Michael Caine seems like an odd choice for this, you know? But he ends up delivering quite well, actually. Yeah, he plays the range very well, from yeah. mild-mannered Englishman mm -hmm. to, like, losing his mind insane. You know, by the end of the movie, he's pretty much completely lost his mind. Yeah, yeah. The movie kind of starts off with him being all happy, and yeah. he's got some picturesque life, you know, and yeah. a good career. And it goes downhill fast, like, yeah. in the car. And basically, when that starts to happen, his life just basically takes a downward spiral all the way down to the bottom. All about the characters and the relationship and the dynamic between all the characters. None of the relationships in this movie are healthy or good. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like anybody's really all that happy. No, and, and everyone is kind of a miserable asshole in this. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, John included, you know, like... <laughs> So the relationship he has with his wife isn't good because she wants to leave him. Mm -hmm. Go do yoga with this yoga guy and starts having this affair with this yoga guy. They're all in that sick observation yeah. booth <laughs> watching the yoga. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? John suspects this right off the bat when she says, I don't want you to move to New York with me. Yeah, You're fucking him, aren't you? Are you fucking him? <laughs> Has he been fucking you? Fucking. Fucking. The way Michael Caine says fucking, fucking. is spectacular. <laughs> fucking. Fucking. <laughs> you are fucking him. Fucking you. The relationship that he has with even Stella, his mistress, isn't good because she's cheating on him as well. Yeah. yeah. The relationship he has with his manager, his agent, are all horrible. So this yeah. guy, nothing is good in his life. Yeah, it's depressing, actually. Yeah. Like, he's got a pretty shitty life. Good twist on the Jekyll and Hyde story, yeah. right? These things that are happening are the bad side. But you don't blame the guy for losing his mind after losing his hand. Mm -hmm. Christ, I get mad when I just misplace my beer. Where the hell did I put my beer? You misplaced it again, didn't you? Where the hell did I put it? Well, did you leave it in the bathroom or something? Why would I leave my beer in the bathroom? I wouldn't take it to the bathroom with me. Where is it? Where's my fucking beer? I hate when I lose my fucking beer! So, where'd you find it? It was in the bathroom. Uh, the mystery for the movie is really good too, because you're not sure what is going on. Who is, what is causing these deaths or these mysterious circumstances, right? They do a great job of keeping that a mystery too. Yeah. They don't, they don't really leave you that much. No, like right to the bitter end, they yeah. keep that a mystery. You don't know if they actually went as far as having a hand coming back to life and killing people. Yeah. You think that that might be the real case in this movie. Mm -hmm. they, they do a good enough job where it's like, you don't know, is it really the hand or is it John? Yeah, and they tease that all the way to the end. Like, yeah. even the final scene, they yeah. still kind of tease that, which is, yeah. I like how they keep that going. Yeah, that's really what the movie's all about. It all hinges on that mystery. Yeah. And the effects in this movie are great. You know, the hand, the yeah. hand looks good. The hand looks cool. Yeah, I like it's all rotten yeah. looking and yeah. sort of menacing and yeah. huge too. Yeah, yeah, and it starts like <laughs> crawling and everything. It's very much like, you know, like a thing <laughs> yeah. from Adam's family, but also reminiscent to Evil Dead 2 when Ash <laughs> yeah. cuts off his hand. It kind of goes hand in hand with the kills. Pretty bloody too, like the guy in the Jeep gets killed by mm. the hand, like rips his 
throw it all up and everything. It's yeah. a pretty gruesome kill. Even when Michael Caine loses his hand, it's, there's a lot of blood, yeah. you know? Yeah, and the effect is good. Even, even mm -hmm. though we can tell it's his rubber hand, <laughs> yeah. it's still a good effect. It's still believable, right? Yeah. You have to mention the sound design in this movie is, like, really good. Yeah. The fact that we both noticed it, it does a really good job of building the tension. Mm -hmm. Like, right from the beginning when him and his wife are arguing in the car, and the car behind them is honking. You don't see the car yeah. behind them. You just hear the, eh, eh, and as they're getting more heated, this car starts honking at them more. Pisses you off more. And it's pissing you off too as the viewer. It's like, oh fuck, like, just pass them or whatever. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and even like, the clock ticking in the background while they're having a bit of an argument. It's all you know? super loud. It's louder than it should be. You yeah, know? To, yeah. To, 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 for that reason. Yeah. You, you know? hear like water dripping from the faucet and you hear things crunching yeah. and like the floor is creaking. It really helps to place you as the viewer right there. Yeah. And the music is great for this movie too. It was done by James Horner. It helps build the atmosphere for the movie. It helps build the tone. Yeah. Because like you were mentioning, it's a serious movie. That helps. And we have to mention the awesome showdown at the end of the movie between John and the hand. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool and again, a great effect. You can't watch it without thinking that Evil Dead 2 must have been at least slightly inspired by this scene because yeah. it is very reminiscent of Ash versus his hand. Yeah, exactly. And Evil Dead 2. <laughs> and the way they do it too, you know, like. You don't. You just see the hand coming up, John. So you don't see what's below. Yeah. And it's like it's done really well. Yeah. Like like the fingernails on the hand too, yeah. and everything. <laughs> it's like yeah. This movie is full of twists and turns. You know, there's actually a couple of twists in this movie because there's the reveal. You find out whether or not it is a real evil hand. <laughs> yeah. Or not. And then after that, there's another twist at the end yet, just before the credits roll. So it keeps you guessing all the way through. It kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat and wondering, like, yeah. well, what the hell's going on here? Is he really insane or is it this fucking hand? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and it's great. It's yeah. a thriller mystery movie. Again, silly premise but pulled off in a serious way that you believe it. And it's stylistically very interesting too. A lot of neat things happening with, like we mentioned, the sound. It cuts to black and white for some scenes. POV shots when people get killed by the hand suddenly it turns to black and white. That old monster movie yeah. sort of feel. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of artsy in a way too. Right, yeah. Yeah, they, they really did a good job, you know, it's funny. For a movie that almost seems a little filler in everybody's career, yeah. Oliver Stone, Michael Caine, yeah. it kind of isn't. Yeah. It's just not a throwaway movie. So if you're in the mood for a good murder mystery with some supernatural elements, and it deals a lot with like human psychology. Yeah, the human condition. Definitely check out The Hand. It'll leave you gripped. <laughs> <laughs> in fear. <laughs> yeah. Until next time. Keep drinking.